go? Yes. Um, so we often are, are being told what we need to do and we just follow up. So when we when we are um, told as business owners that we really need to work hard, that we need to do it all, we tend to do it all, okay? And I really want to take you through the three steps of the framework that changed my life and the way I run my business. And the three steps are setting goals, setting priorities, and then taking aligned action. Now, setting goals, we talked about yesterday. And one of the things that I have drafted for you is a guide to become a goal getter. In the guide, you will find five questions that are really amazing and that can help you tremendously with truly getting your goals. And I've shared it in a Facebook group, but I'm going to share it here today with you so you actually can see the five questions. And Jackie, if you wouldn't mind sharing it. So one of the things I took away yesterday was that I do not longer want to multitask. Thank you, Audrey, for making that remark as well. Um, because I found it quite difficult to share links to the Facebook group with you while I wanted to really focus on, on, on everything. And that's why I asked Jackie, who's in my team, to be here today, uh, but also to share um, the documents I've prepared for you. And there is another guide that is really highlighting the five steps that will help you to become a goal getter. It's not something that I'm going to um, really dive deep into because I'm taking you through the overall steps, but I highly recommend you look at it. And once you look at it, you understand why, because it allows you to pinpoint really what it is that you need to do to become a goal getter and to smash your goals with ease. So you will see that right now in the chat and you can download it. Or if you like me, don't want to multitask, just remember it's also in the Facebook group waiting for you. Okay, so today we are going to talk about the next step in my signature framework, which is setting your priorities. Tell me, who works with priorities here? Okay, who um, struggles sometimes with focus? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, I struggled and sometimes still struggle with focus. Focus and priorities are interlinked. And the problem most of us have is because we're so eager, we're so driven, we want to make it work that we go from our goal directly into action. I had a call yesterday with someone who was really eager to um, grow her business to the next level and we spoke about it and she really she was happy to you know um, get more clients in and the, the the thing was that she didn't listen about setting priorities all she was like this is my goal and this is the action i need to take but without becoming very clear on what your priorities are you will end up chasing everything Okay, so your priorities are key. Now, I love that you say that, Dr. David, um, what should be the top priority? And that's what I want to talk to you about, because priorities, yeah, it, it, it's a bit of an empty phrase, isn't it? Yeah, you need to work on your priorities. But great, what are my priorities? The thing that go often uh, wrong is that we have too many priorities on the one hand, business-wise, and two little priorities on the other hand, life-wise. Many of you told me I signed up to this because so often life gets in the way or something unexpected happened. And, and then, you know, I, I was planning to do all this and all of a sudden I couldn't finish it. And now I feel angry with myself because yet again, I couldn't finish all my tasks. This is because you have not included all your priorities on your priority list. And what do I mean by that? Your priorities should include your entire life. So if you have a family and your family is important to you, they should be part of your priority, right? Um, if you value your health, Yesterday, there were quite a few people that said, I want to feel better again. I will feel good in my skin again. Your health is a priority. 
then there is your body, soul, mind that all needs nourishing. Okay. Yesterday, we also spoke about some people that are more like to do business from an intuitive perspective. If that is you, you may be aware that you need some more time to get these intuitive reactions to you. You may need some time to process it. You may need some time to get this innovative, innovative, innovative ideas to you, right? So allow yourself more time so you actually can grasp what is coming to you. Priorities means that you need to include everything you find important in your life. Now, as a business owner, what do we do often? We only look at our business, right? Because that's what we want to grow. We were eager to get to the next level. But if you get sick, you can't grow. And if you value your family, but you're never with them, you can't grow because it has impact. Everything is interconnected. So priority wise, make sure that you don't just look at your business goals, but you also include your family, your health and your well-being. I'm just wondering if I tell you this, is there something in your mind that shifts? Do you already think, oh, maybe that's why I'm always pressured for time? Just let me know in the chat, please, and I can take a, a sip of water. Okay, something is already shifting. Now tell me, why did you start your business? Let me know in the chat, what's the reason? Why did you start your business? And if you maybe you're still um, very or very or a bit unclear of why you started your business, um, ask yourself seven times why. It's a very um, powerful change management tool that I use often with my clients as well when they say this is my why and I can tell and I can feel it's not truly the why. Okay, so why did you start your business? Let, let me know in the chat. Yeah, I always feel I'm behind. That's, yeah. You know, that's a, what a lot of people have. They feel behind because they don't include everything. And basically, and we'll talk about it a bit later, you want to do too much. Yeah. Leave corporate. Yeah, I so can relate to that. Have freedom. Yeah, because it's my heart. I really like that. Okay, heart is coming through. Okay, so there are, are great reasons um, for a lot of people to, to, to start your business. Now, what I see happening too often is when people don't look at their priorities and they don't align their priorities to the reason why they started their business is that they actually very easily lose focus but they also very easily start to resent, even at a very small level, that they're working day and night and that there's never enough time. And that's also what happens when they start beating themselves up for not doing enough. So when you have this feeling, first of all, no, you're not the only one. But second of all, then know that you need to do something on your priorities to shift that. Okay, yes, yeah, Start With Why by Simon Sinek. It's a great a book. It's also a great uh, video, The Golden Circle. Um, look it up on YouTube. So I also had clients and I'm going to share something also from my personal experience. As you know, I used to be a workaholic. I worked a lot. And in all fairness, the reason why I worked a lot is because Society told me that if I wanted to be successful, I needed to work hard. Society told me that I really could only be um, reaching my next level of success and my next level of greatness once I worked so many hours. And to be too truthful, I also felt unworthy. I didn't feel good enough. I felt that only if I would put in so many hours, only if I would put in so much of my time, then all of a sudden I would become accepted by the standards. I all of a sudden would be seen as very successful. 
And there were some of the discussions and some questions that were sent to me that had to do with feeling unworthy, not feeling seen, not feeling um, great. And this is something that you need to shift. And I'm going to talk about confidence today as well. But it's really important that you understand that you are worthy, that you came here worthy. Nothing is going to change that. You're not becoming more worthy when you're working harder. But you, and especially as business owner, need to feel worthy. You need to feel confident. If you don't feel that, it's going to push people away. So it's a very important thing that we need to touch on. And all too often, I see people that work hard because they then think they are worthy and then are very disappointed because it's not, it's not working. Or I see people that work hard because they're trying to escape everyday life. They may not be so happy with their family situation. They may not be so happy with their friends that maybe they don't have enough friends or not so many friends. And they're trying to fill a void. But that void can never be filled with work. Okay, so back to um, priorities. The number one thing that always goes wrong with priorities is when people set too many priorities. Whoever has the feeling, I have to do it all, let me know. Do you ever feel, oh my word, I have to do it all? And, and, and not just have to do it all, but also struggle with doing it all. Is there someone who struggles with that? Okay, yeah. Well, that again has to do with your priorities and what I would like to call the shiny object syndrome. Have you ever heard of that? If so, can you raise your hand? Yeah, the shiny object syndrome is basically you're doing one thing and you're doing quite well. And then you maybe scroll on social media and you see this very successful entrepreneur or they look very successful on social media and they tell you, you know what, you need to sell webinars. And you go like, you know, hmm. They got very successful with it. So let me also start doing webinars. So you're doing two things now. And then another night, you're still on social media and you see someone saying, hey, you need to do Facebook ads. And you go like, oh, they got very successful with Facebook ads. Now I already don't have hands enough. So you're doing Facebook ads, three things. And then someone tells you, you know what, TikTok, TikTok is the bomb. You should do dancing. You're so great. You look so amazing. Go and go do TikTok and do little dances on TikTok. So you start adding TikTok to the mix. <laughs> You're already doing four things. Now I chuckle with this because my, you know, I'm trying to, to show you, but in reality, this is what happens too often. Instead of focusing on one or two things and really, really getting to become an expert in what we do, we try to add, 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 add. And when you add very simply, you're spreading yourself very thin, okay? So, and I see your remark, Hans, I'm doing it all, um, all by myself. Yes, you know, we, we, that's how we all start. But the thing is, even when you do it all by yourself, if you focus and you prioritize the right things, then it will become easy. And Michael, yes, I hear you with, with what you're saying. Um, it happens. And that's actually uh, one of my clients had the same. And we really worked on a system that helped him to get that focus back. OK, and it happens with a lot of us. We have a creative brain. We are entrepreneurs. So we are set up to see opportunities everywhere. So we go, 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 go and grab every opportunity. The thing is, what's really going to help you if you limit your priorities and how do you limit them? Well, ask yourself. Most who, who, whose goal is to to get more clients? Let me know whose goal is that? Is there, yeah, yeah, most of us. Okay, great. I see you, Will, I see you. Um, always is more clients. Oh, great. So now, if you're already in business for a longer time, you know what works really well for you to get clients, right? If you're looking for prior priorities, that should be a priority. 
Okay, do more of what works best. That's your number one priority. Now, let's say you've been in business for a while and yes, this works well, but you also feel you're either open for a new challenge or you have more space and you need to get another avenue to tap into new clients. Then the question becomes, what do I love to do? Okay, there are many ways to attract new clients, but what do I love to do? And what, because I love to do it, becomes easy for me. We forget often that we can have ease in our business. It's like a human thing. We try to complicate everything. You don't have to. When you love to do something, it becomes automatically easier. When you love to speak, go and speak. When you love video or you love to engage, do that. There is always an easier way for you to either start with or to follow up with. Those should be your priorities. Okay, tell me in the chat instantly, no forms, false shame. What comes easy to you? What comes easy? Tell me in the chat, what is easy? Networking, great. So you're an excellent connector, sales. Yeah, I know you rock at that. Writing, having conversations. Paid seminars, public speaking, design. Yeah, that's the actual work. Networking, creating content, communication, teaching, public speaking, networking. Okay, so these are all great things. These are all money-making things. All the things you've written down there can get you new clients. Okay, so if you're struggling to find clients, go back to the chat and see, hey, I wrote down that I'm good at that. I'm going to do more of that. Does that sound easy to you? Yeah, that's what I want. I want it to be feel easy because it is. I can sell dust to an Arab in a sandstorm. I love that. <laughs> Okay, so, um, so basically, if you want focus, you really need to scale down on your priorities, okay? Scale down. Include your priorities of your life and make sure that you have enough space for unexpected things. Because that also means that you have enough space to work on your health to take a break, because when you allow more time, things again will become more easy, there's less pressure, and you actually will feel better in your skin. One of the things I said today is don't forget how important you are. And maybe Jackie, can you share at a workbook for a, a day two? And, and trust me, um, you all find this in the Facebook group as well, but I have made some notes while I was preparing my, um, my talk today. I'm laughing because I, I must be honest, I've never been so prepared and I just, I wasn't planning on making a workbook because I wanted to do this lean and just share it with you. But I just feel I have so much to talk about. So I just typed it all out. So the workbook is there, which also gives you the, I think I had seven points how to focus better. Okay, so it's all there. So you can read it again. This is for you to keep and to go back to. Um, but really, don't pressure yourself with planning every day to the max because that is too much and it's going to drain you. And when you're drained, remember, most of us want more clients. When you're drained, your energy is low. You will for sure not attract more clients because nobody likes to work with you when you are drained. Now, talking about draining, I want to do an exercise with you. Who has pen and paper there? Yeah, most of you, great. Okay, grab, if you don't have it, grab a piece of paper, please. And I want you to write a word down. And I would especially love to, to say this to the people who aren't visible right now, okay? Becca, Lindy, Dr. David, Cynthia, Louis, Fireflies. Oh, it's Anna Maria. Yeah. Okay, everybody's got a piece of paper and a pen, Hans, you've got it as well. 
Yeah, cool. Okay, so what I want you to do is I want you to write down the words multitasking. Multitasking, just write it down. That's what I want you to write on a piece of paper. Okay. Yeah, all done. Now I want you, the next one, the next step I want you to do is I want you to write down the numbers underneath the letters. So the M is number one, the U is number two, the L number three, and so on. So I want you to write down the numbers underneath multitasking. Okay. Everybody done it? You're a quick writer, Audrey. Okay, excellent. Now, it was easy, right? Did anybody make a mistake? Okay, excellent. Now the next one, we're starting again. I want you to start writing the M, but instead of writing the second letter, I want you to start writing, don't write yet. I want you to write number one underneath. So you go M1, U2, L3, and, 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 and until you've written all multitasking. Now tell me your experience. And if you can, you can unmute yourself or type it in the chat, don't mind either way. Did you notice a difference? Let me start there. Okay. Second round was way longer, yes, more focused. Which one was more focused? Sorry, someone wanted to, oh, the second one. Okay, I made two mistakes in the end. Yes, Sarah, was that in the, in, the, in the second round? Took longer, yeah. Becca, why were you smiling? I wanted to know. And somebody was starting to say something. Sorry to, um, I was talking through it. I was smiling because I had to think about how I was spelling the word multitasking, even though I've written it a thousand times. <laughs> Good. <laughs> and which one was quicker? Uh, the first one, for sure. The first one, yeah. Okay, excellent. Yeah, I see that more people, first was more focused for me, way more easy. Second one required a bit of attention. Yeah. Yeah. So this is a very easy example, right? About what happens when you're multitasking. So when you do when you write the word multitasking first and then you write the numbers underneath it's really easy you don't even have to think about it once you know okay multitasking yeah numbers yeah okay great i'm doing it but then all of a sudden you can tell that your your mind is kind of switched off yeah i have to let letter first number second and this isn't a it's not a difficult task is it it's a really easy peasy and still this is hard. This is what happens when you're not focusing. This is what happens when you're on a Zoom call and you're also attending to your emails or whatever you're doing, okay? This is why setting your priorities is key. And what's gonna help you with focusing is to switch off any notifications and to really, really be present. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm having a Zoom meeting with someone and I hear beam, 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 all the emails popping in. I'm not happy with that, especially not when I see those eyes go like, I'm, I'm like, are we, are we having a conversation or are you in your email, right? So also be aware of the message you're sending across because you are representing your company. And there is a saying, the way you do one thing you do all things. So keep the focus there. I'm looking at the time. I don't want to go over time. So why do most people fail with priority setting? Why do most people fail with not achieving their goals? Priority setting, most people fail because they want to do too much. 
in too little time. So give yourself a break because if you focus on fewer things and you do better, you will get instant results, okay? Take away that enormous pressure and stop adding things to it. Now, why do most people fail with their goals? Because they don't think about their priorities, but go into action straight away. They don't ask themselves, what do I want to prioritize in my life? What is important to me? And how can I really do what I love and do best? Now, the other thing why people fail is because they want to do it all by themselves. Okay, a very important thing to remember is that you can get help. Okay, I'm right now able to help you these coming three days. Um, Jackie, could you please pop in the Facebook group um, uh, link? I'm in the Facebook group. You guys have connected with me elsewhere. Great, I'm here to help you. Also, I can already tell you that this is for three days, but I am going to offer a longer um, 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 coaching program a possibility as well. I will talk about it more tomorrow, but it's going to be um, available because I've seen again and again how quick you can go when you have someone helping you, how quick you can go when you have somebody holding you accountable, how quick you can go when you really get that focus and you have someone to keep you focused. Okay, so what I did today, um, I got Jackie to help me. I got um, Francis to help me with sending out the newsletters because I found, hey, I'm struggling. I actually want to have lunch with my daughter. She made me lunch for the first time. It was, <laughs> it was so nice. Um, and I decided I want to take this time out because this is what I started my business for, to have more fun, to have more freedom and you need to make it work, okay? So a very important thing also why you need to set your priorities and start saying yes to yourself and no to others is because when you see how good you are at achieving your priorities in working on your priorities, you will start to feel better about yourself. You will start believing more in yourself. And when we talk about attracting clients, which is our overall goal, then it's good that you believe in yourself and that you see how much you can achieve because it's all helping you to really magnetize those clients to you, okay? So if you're not doing it for yourself, then at least do it for your business because it will make an impact, yeah? That's what I wanted to share with you today. And I'm very proud because I did it again in 30 minutes. Um, I've shared with you or Jackie shared with you in the chat and you can download it. But again, you can also find it in the Facebook group. The Goal Getter Guide. Trust me, you, you want to see it because it has five amazing questions that are going to help you to become that goal getter. She shared with you the workbook of day one and the workbook of day two. Okay. These are merely the, the, the notes of my talk, but you can keep them. In workbook two, you will also find the assignment of today. So the questions I have prepared for you, which I didn't write down. Great, hold on, let me get them. And again, the assignment is an obligation, but if you want to win the prizes, then I definitely would do it. And maybe Jackie, can you also share the prices? Because then you can see how you can easily win a voucher for a thousand dollars to work with me. Okay, so these are the questions I wanted to ask you for today. If we listening to today and you go back to your goal, have you made sure that your entire life is incorporated in there? So have you included your well-being, your time with your friends and your family? If not, change them. Okay, that's number one. Two, what are your top three priorities? Okay, and if you need uh, my help with figuring out what are my true top priorities, message me. You can do it privately. You can do it in the Facebook group. I don't mind. Either way, I'm happy to help. And a big question, how do you envision to keep the focus? So those are the questions I had for you today. Um, again, let me know what comes up for you or any questions you may have, because that's what I'm here for. Now, this is the official end of day two. 
And I want to take some time for the Q&A. I heard yesterday that I, I ended the session too soon. There wasn't enough time for the Q&A. So I'm keeping it open. So if you have any queries, let me know. You can either unmute yourself or you can um, um, send it in the chat. I don't mind either way. And I want to touch on a question that came up in the Facebook group, which was to do with actually fear of rejection. OK. And I think a lot of us can relate to that. This question was to do with, I feel bad when I want to post um, or reach out to clients because when I post, I don't get a lot of people responding. Now I'm first going to zoom in this specific situation and then take it up a notch about the fear of rejection. When you are starting to post and when you are new, even when you're not new, but you get my drift and you're not getting that many eyeballs on your posts. It can be very demotivating, okay? There are a couple of things to realize. First of all, everybody starts with no views. Let me start there. There's nothing new, everybody starts. You know, you could be new to the platform, you could be new to the business, doesn't matter. Everybody starts like that. The key is to keep going until you get people that are watching you. And there are many ways to do that. So if you, again, want some tips, let me know. Also be aware that most people that buy or most people that want to work with you may not necessarily engage with you, okay? They are called the lurkers and 70% of most people, and I hear that the number is actually going up. For example, 70% on LinkedIn do not engage, but they do buy. And that's also my experience, right? Okay. Then lastly, if you've been trying this and you should try for at least 90 days and still crickets, then you just need to change something in the way you bring it, okay? It could be that it's not polarizing enough. It could be that it doesn't grab my attention enough. It could be that it's not specific enough. It's just too generic. Everybody can relate, so nobody can buy, okay? That's what often happens. Now, this was about posting, but I also heard some people or reach out to me with the fear of rejection, okay? One of the reasons, one of the people said to me, I actually do not like to set goals because I'm afraid that I won't, um, I won't hit them. I have a bad, bad experience around that. If that is the case, just start with something that you know you can achieve. But better yet, start working with someone, okay? Um, and it could be a coach, but it could also be a friend or another business party, someone who's really out there for you. Because being an entrepreneur can be very lonely, you know? And if you have someone you can chat to, you understand actually you're not on your own, okay? So the fear of rejection is a very common thing. You also need to keep in mind, and I'm gonna say something controversial here, that it's actually a good thing when some people will reject you. Let me say that again. It is a good thing when some people will reject you. And I will tell you why. Because first of all, can you imagine that the whole world falls in love with you and wants to work with you? And you have to do it all by yourself. Well, I can tell you that you would be running to Bora Bora and be sitting on a, underneath a, a palm tree for the rest of your life because that is way too much people. You do not want to work with everyone. I can tell you even better, you do not like everyone yourself, right? It would be very rare if you would like everyone. There are certain people you do not want to work with. So fear of rejection is a good thing, but it's also something you might turn around and say, if people reject me, I'm actually becoming more and more appealing to those that love me. OK, because the more specific you are and please be authentically specific, the better it gets and the more of your tribe, your people, your community, you will attract. 
And this is something that is very daunting and very scary. But if you show up authentically, who you are with all your quirks and, and every, everything that makes you, you will give people the opportunity to fall in love with you. And yes, you also give people the opportunity to reject you. But again, the more they reject you, the more other people will love you. So if you can take that fear and beat it by taking action, because you are obliged to the people that are waiting for you, you are obliged to the people that love you and know that you are on your way, you can actually make a big impact. And I must be honest, I had recently, I had someone commenting on LinkedIn saying something that it was a ridiculous post. I shouldn't be on LinkedIn. And at first I was like, oh, really? And then I thought, I made it. I have someone who doesn't agree to me. And I said to him, I'm so grateful for your comment. Thank you, because I made it. And I thought, oh my word, he doesn't, he doesn't get it. And I texted my business buddy and I said, look, look, I made it. I got someone who didn't like me. I made it. And it was actually a great feeling. And then I had another one saying, this isn't Facebook. And I thought, oh, nice. <laughs> because I always love those posts that people say, this isn't Facebook. I like the more personal things, but that's me, okay? And it's, it's absolutely fine if not everybody likes you, okay? So yeah, it happened to me. Yeah, great. I think we all go over it. And it's, you know, and I must say some of the comments are really, really um, not nice, but look at the real, the, the influences. Look at, we had, um, what's his name now? Um, Cynthia, you, you posted about it. Um, it all starts with why, Simon Sinek. Look at some of the posts of Simon Sinek, right? He has many, many comments. Many of them aren't nice, okay? Does, he, does it bother him? Perhaps, but he keeps showing up because there's also a whole lot of people that do love him. Yeah? Okay. Um, yeah, I, I hear you, Hans. Sometimes it feels it's easier not to sell a, pr a product of myself. Yeah, because then it's not you that you're selling. I think every business owner can relate to that. But the thing is, the more you fall in love with what you sell, the more you fall in love with yourself and your business, the more you understand that if you're not selling it, you're actually doing people a displeasure. You need to see yourself as a doctor, okay? You are a doctor and you have medication for other people and they need it. Now, what are you gonna say? I'm not gonna give it to you because you might not like it or are you gonna say, hey, you need it? I've got something for you. I do hope that you become a doctor and that you fall in love with what you have to sell so that you allow other people also to like it because that's going to happen. Are there any questions regarding day one, day two or more in general? Because I am here and I'm going to stay quiet a bit. So because yesterday they told me you, you, you stopped it too early. So I'm going to be quiet for a bit. So if there are anything... Go for it. Great question, Jocelyn. Okay, I start, I struggle with prioritizing short-term and long-term priorities. I hear you. And I think other people have this as well. And I think this is also what often happens why we, um, sorry, I'm, I'm looking at your note. Yes, uh, Michael, I recorded it. If you go to the Facebook group, you will see it. Um, and otherwise text me, I will send you the YouTube link. Um, prioritizing long-term and short-term. So what it comes down to, Jocelyn, is what is your overall goal? Okay, now let's say your overall goal is to, what's your overall goal? You want to share or, or shall I come up with an example? And you can unmute yourself if you want, but shall I, or shall I pick one? Um, my overall goal is to have uh, clients that are satisfied with what I uh, what I deliver. Yeah. Okay. So client satisfaction and clients, and and you have quite a few clients coming already to you, right? 
Yes. Can I just share this? Because Jocelyn, I, I worked with Jocelyn before. She's amazing. And she turned her passion into her business. And she's just, you know, I just want to share that because I'm so proud of you. Anyway, so Jocelyn has a lot of clients already coming to her. And then the question is, how do I keep them satisfied? Right? That's the overall goal. Now, that's the goal. So it's all about nurturing your clients and really, really making sure that they feel appreciated, that you deliver the right things to them, and that they, even if they have questions afterward, can come back to you. Right? Okay, so that's the goal. Now, I know long-term goal, you also want the other things that people will tell you that you need to. A Facebook group, social media, a website, right? Okay, now I'm going to say something that again might sound controversial. I think you might not even need it at all. Because your goal is to have satisfied clients. The thing is, we're always told you need a website, you need a Facebook group, you need social media presence. And yeah, maybe you do, but maybe you don't. Because right now, a lot of your clients come through word of mouth. A lot of your clients come through the, your collaboration partner. And you've only just started. I know that you're already working some time, but it isn't like you're already five years in. So can you imagine if the word of mouth starts spreading more and more and more? And, 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 and if your goal is to keep your clients satisfied, you should prioritize on that. If you then feel, I still want social media presence, I still want a website, I still want a Facebook community, you can do two things. You can say, I'm going to hire someone to do it for me. So I don't have to worry about it, but it's still there. Or you can just say, I'm never going to do it. I'm doing business my way. And right now I am with a coach and I'm not, this is, I didn't honest, I didn't even believe, I would not have believed it, would I not have been in her group. She's making 23 million a year without, without any website, without any emails. All she does is post on Facebook and on Instagram, and that's it. 23 million a year. Her motto in life is, my clients need to be satisfied. I'm connecting with them, and that's all I do. So I'm just telling you this to share that there is so much more possible. So don't fall into the shiny object syndrome of thinking I need to do that because right now it might not be what you really need to do. Yeah. So your long-term goals, your, your uh, long-term um, priorities become very long-term because you're doing it on your own. And you've got a life and your life is a priority as well and your family so give yourself some slack and just maybe next year okay does it answer it yes that's i think just what i needed <laughs> good i like that um yeah michael i will i will send the, the youtube link to you and cynthia thank you yeah atomic habits i love that book as well um, let me see. A lot of my thought process is that I am doing something wrong or needs to change and get stuck in trying to figure out what it is. How do I change this? Um, I'm doing something wrong or needs to change. Can you elaborate, Donna? Or do you want to elaborate before I, I, I have a lot of uh, assumptions? Hi. Yes. Yeah, so like um, I'm just starting out with this um, online thing. And like I see other people do it and I see how it works for them. And it's like, okay, so I can't do that, but what else can I do? And then it doesn't work. And then I get stuck in why is it not working? Yes. Okay. This again, thank you for sharing because this happens to a lot, uh, to a lot of us. And I'm going to say something blunt. We give up too soon. We really give up too soon. 
and I'll, I'm, I'll share a personal experience with you. So when I started my business, I started with a launch. I hired a coach, I paid her a lot of money and I was like, okay, I'm gonna launch and it's gonna be epic and I'm gonna do amazing things and I'm gonna get all people that sign up the launch filled miserably. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, this, this doesn't work. I'm not gonna do it again. And then I stopped, I tried some other launches, didn't work. And then I was like, okay, you know what? I'm going to give it another try, but now I'm going to, I've learned from my past and I'm going to do it differently. And I'm not going to set my expectations so high because I know I'm going to do it again and again. This happens too often. Okay. We give up after one or two tries. We give up after 30 days of posting on social media. Okay. If you want to really make it work, try something that you love to do. Do it on a place, if you're talking about social media, where you really like to be, okay? And do it again and again and again and learn from your mistakes. That really, really is important, okay? There's nothing wrong with you. It's just you need to figure it out. But it's best to try. And if someone, you know, tells you, oh, I didn't like that, you take it on board if it's valid. And otherwise you just think, well, that's one of the person that's not my people. I'm just going to go on. Yeah, but really focus on, on pick one thing. And for you, I would say pick one social media channel and go full in. Because you can make it work. And the one thing that always gets to us is when we see other people doing what we want to, what we want to achieve and they do it well. And we go like, oh, why can't I do it? Right? That happens. Who, who, who had that feeling? Oh, I see them and they all do it great. And I, oh, oh, oh. it doesn't work for me. I, I had that feeling. I can still have the feeling. But the thing what they don't show you is they've been doing this for years. They may have had successful businesses up front. They may have help that you don't have. They may have a whole team helping them. They, I don't know what, it doesn't matter. They're not you. And instead of thinking, shoot, they do it and I can't and putting yourself down, try to do it differently and try to say to yourself, they do it so I can do it as well. Yeah. So when you see somebody very successful doing what you want to do, they do it so I can do it as well. And the reason that I see that they are doing it tells me that I can do it as well. Otherwise, I wouldn't even see it. Yeah. And with organic um, um, posting, which is not paid basically, and posting on social media, it really takes at least 90 days to see whether your message comes across well. So it also has to do with a bit of patience, which I also don't have, I must be honest. Yes, thank you, Cynthia. Are there any other questions? Michael, I posted the, um, uh, the YouTube link in the, I think it's the YouTube link. If not, just email me, okay? Or send it to me on LinkedIn. But I think that's the YouTube link for yesterday. Can I ask one more question? Sure. Um, before you ask us about what we, one word, what we can do best, mm -hmm. our communication, was that, uh, I'm just trying to recap, was that because um, we needed to do that when we failed to um, uh, get back to our priorities or when we couldn't determine our goal? No, um, so the question was, um, what do you do best? What are you good at? You know, if you want to, if you want to find a, a priority that really comes easy to you, stick with what you do best. So you love to talk and you're very good at talking and you're very good at connecting. Right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there's the, the, admit it, you know, and that's the one thing that you're, you're, this is what you're good at. I know it, you know it. So this is great. Now, so how do you get your clients? You're going to talk. Mm -hmm. Because that's effortless. And that's the thing. We always think, oh my God, now I need to get clients. Okay, so what do I need to do? Oh, I need to post on social media. I need to network. And... What do you love to do? I love to talk. Okay, reach out to your friends, reach out to your network, talk. 
ask who they can introduce you to so you can talk a bit more. Okay, got it. Yeah? Thanks. <laughs> okay, Marlene, I'm building on my vision on the long term and I know that I need to keep posting networking, oh, there's already, etc. to have results. Can you already see that those are not priorities, Marlene? Um, yeah, mm, yeah, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, and I get it because this is what, what we've been taught, right? Oh, I need to post, I need to network, I need to do it all. And, and you're, you're touching on, I think, a very important point. Short term, I need clients. Long term, yeah. I want to do it all. Short term, what's the quickest way to win clients? What do you do well? Tell me, what do you do well? Networking and public speaking. Okay, so where can you network? Where can you public speak? That's yeah. it. Yeah. And do a whole lot of networking. Yeah. And at the same time, I feel that, I don't know if you, if you, I started my business quite from scratch and decided I, I didn't like, ended the job part-time and built I just it was just like point zero and go yeah did that too. <laughs> so I'm very impatient right now because yeah. my boyfriend is paying the rent and I I don't want that anymore <laughs> but I'm not there where I have these clients so I I totally see what you mean and I think the focus is but maybe it's just my impatience that is really like triggering that multitasking the the the, the like oh I need to be there, 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 because I want clients now. So it's also a bit um, omzet stress, like, yeah, profit stress. Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Very common, okay? So nothing uncommon. The mistake most of us make is that we think we need to do different things to get over that profit stress. Mm. Whereas if you become very skilled in networking and gaining clients from networking, which you love to do and goes easy, you will get those clients. So instead of telling yourself, I need to do everything else, I would rather have you do more networking mm. and more connecting and more conversion from that then add something to it, which you do not even like. And that gives you stress because there's too much to do and still the money doesn't come in. Yeah. Yeah. Quick, quick follow-up question. And then I'll give someone else space. with, for example, with posting and being visible, there's also like be visible. Otherwise no one is going to find. Um, if I say prioritize maybe, or if I'm thinking about that now, then I'm consider I stop blogging and posting because I want to focus on networking. Why should I do it all? But then my like angel devil <laughs> is like, no, then you are not visible. Don't do that. Yeah. It's the I biggest you. mistake you can make. Yeah. Okay. So what do you what, think about that? <laughs> I, I, I think that's one of the, that's the shiny object syndrome. Mm -hmm. And I think we hear that a lot. And actually, it's also a, a common misconception also on, on LinkedIn, for example, because most of you are on LinkedIn, um, is that we need to post to attract people. Hmm. And that's sending. What do most people love? They love to be seen. Hmm. They love to be connected to. They love to share their story. So instead of posting... You should rather be commenting. You should rather be chatting sincerely with people in the DM and making connections. And that's how things will start to turn. And are you visible? You are. You may not be visible to 10,000 people. Who cares? You do not need 10,000 people right now. You need one client. Yeah. yeah that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Thanks. Right, I am going to wrap it up because it is three, two, yeah, everybody needs to run. Um, so I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you so much for being here today. Don't forget to share your insights or the answers to your questions to win the prizes. Looking forward to seeing you tomorrow, same time, same place. And don't forget, you're amazing. Bye.